Now I'd like to open it up to citizens to be heard. If you'd like to speak to any item that is not on the agenda, we ask you to come forward and state your name and we respectfully ask you to keep your uh, comments to three minutes. My name is Jerry McGuire. I live at 1100 uh, Turner Street. And I just wanted to say surprisingly uh, that I think you're all doing a very good job, you know, uh, downtown. And um, I was out there Saturday at about 4 o'clock and was sitting at the Black Brick. Now, I read this article in the paper. I just wanted to clarify something. There was a misunderstanding. You had so many people out there, you can't put them in one place. And and because of the, uh, the whole virus and all. You have to drop them off in the center where they can just divide out until we can build up the city big enough to hold that many people. You know, you had a lot of people out there. But it was, it was really nice. I was in there in the, the Black Brick, and they have, I was in there with, the, you know, my Mike Rinder doll. It's $32. Everybody should buy one. It's, <laughs> it's good luck charm. It's very good luck charm for everybody. But it was, it was really nice. It was inspiring. I, consider, I personally thought it was, like, biblical. A lot of people, if you read your stuff, it was. It was to me, it was biblical. So I, I think everybody should see it. It was really neat. It was really neat to see all these people there. And they're stars of the city. They're the stars of the city. You're the star now. So, um, but I just wanted to say that I, I think you're all doing a great job. You, you really are. And Mark, you're doing a fantastic job. I just wanted to give you support on this and tell you that I think that the, the, the Tampa Bay Times is just, they're, they're part of the problem. I mean, there was a misunderstanding. That's all it was. I spoke with them. I go in there all the time. The reason I spend money downtown is because of you. Because I've, since 1970, I've lived here. Since 75, I've not spent nothing down there. Okay? Because of you, I spend money down there. And you do a great job. Thank you. Item 10.2. Called City Tours. Council Member Bunker. Thank you. So there's been a lot of consternation lately um, uh, about the tours. And uh, I thought it was probably best for us to talk about it openly, since we can't talk about it individually among ourselves. Um, uh, here's, here's my belief. Uh, this sprang forth from a suggestion that I put forward in an earlier meeting saying uh, we should consider uh, Scientology tourism. And, and I was serious about that. The idea was to bring people downtown, people who are leery of Scientology, take them on a tour of the properties, show them uh, what a great downtown this is at the same time, and at the end of it, demystify Scientology and make people unafraid to just come down here and enjoy the downtown. Now, after saying this at a meeting, um, Ted Reinhardt texted me and said, great idea. And that was the last I heard of it until like a month later when I got another text from him saying, we got the business license and the LLC, we got our tax, uh, uh, city tax, whatever it is, and we're ready to go. So I had no idea that this was actually coming to life. Uh, it's not my company. But I have been trying to advise um, uh, uh, along the way to help him uh, do this I in a better way. Now, there was a huge flap um, this weekend uh, and an article in, in the Tampa Bay Times by Tracy McManus, very good article. She was right on the spot when she criticized Ted for having left a bad review for a couple of our downtown restaurants. I talked to Ted, Ted's removed those, uh, understands that that is entirely the wrong way to go. Um, I've tried talking to the, the managers of the different restaurants. I, I had a nice conversation this morning with uh, the Black Brick um, GM. And um, I, I think we can get this to a point where it will be seen as a positive. I did go and meet with one group of tourists a um, few weekends ago who had just finished the tour. We met up at Downtown Pizza. 
And we talked to them for uh, like an hour. Uh, they all said the same thing. We didn't want to come down here. We took the tour. We love it. We're going to come back and have dinner here with our friends. That is hopefully the process that will um, be a regular thing. So far from my understanding, Ted's brought the equivalent of two tour buses of people down for individual tours. And this past weekend, there was a special tour where a lot of former members of Scientology who had been guest uh, stars on Scientology in the aftermath came to be guest tour guides. And they took turns um, working with the Parks and Rec Department. Uh, Ted found a way to safely uh, get this large group of people. There was 80 to 100 people that, that came for this from here in the city, from around the state, and people flying in from around the country to be part of this as well. Uh, and they managed to put three sections of the groups um, on two different sides of the street, all listened in on their phones, so they could all enjoy the tour without getting too close, without making too much trouble. And at the end of it, the hope was that um, those 80 people would just wind up um, on Cleveland Street, sit down at, uh, at tables outside, and order some food and, and have a great time here. There were some miscommunications, some terrible miscommunications that snowballed and got out of hand. Um, eventually, we took the group over to Safety Harbor, and they all enjoyed a meal over there in Safety Harbor. Um, so when I, when I look at the situation now, on the scale of concerns for downtown, Scientology and the tour, it seems to me Scientology has been a much greater problem for Clearwater than this new tour. And to me, the thing that Ted has shown already is that he can change. The one thing we know about Scientology they cannot change. They will not change. All the policies were put in place by L. Ron Hubbard. They're not allowed to change those policies. One of their policies is anyone who criticizes Scientology is a criminal. All you need to do to silence them is to dig up their crimes. And of course, if you can't dig them up, manufacture them. So. We found out leading up to this weekend's thing, and uh, my friend Aaron Smith Levin, who was on Scientology in the aftermath, whose family was torn apart by disconnection, whose brother committed suicide from this. So perhaps there is a little more passion <laughs> from Aaron on the subject than, than some others who might be sitting here in the room right now. Uh, but Aaron walked in uh, on one of the last restaurants he was going to, to try to arrange, hey, can we come here after the event on Saturday? And he found uh, Pat Harney, the PR lady from Scientology, and Amber, who's uh, head of, you know, with the Welcome Center for Scientology, were presenting the restaurant owner with the injunction that was put in place 20 years ago that names me as part of one of 15 people who used to work for the Lisa McPherson Trust. Now, I don't know about you. I've never gone into a restaurant and said, don't serve any Scientologists. I'm happy to talk to Scientologists and befriend Scientologists, and I don't have a problem with Scientologists. But for them to go in and say, watch out for this individual, he's dangerous, that to me is a problem. That really should be addressed. And it's not just about me. Scientology has tried to use those same tactics against other businesses in the city, driving some businesses out of town um, or, or out of the downtown. I, I talked to a print shop owner who um, worked uh, uh, created some stuff for my campaign last year. 
He was telling me, I, I lost five customers who used to be downtown, but uh, Scientology, you know, bought their properties, and they're gone now. Um, they, they left the area. So Scientology, the tour, Scientology is what we need to be concerned about and what we should be thinking about. Now, as I said, Ted has some growing pains. One of the things that I hope he reconsiders is the name Cult City Tours. Because for a business, my God, that's brilliant. Oh my God, wouldn't you want to book that tour? That sounds like fun. But branding the city, risking branding the city as Cult City is horrible. And I understand completely why the city would be upset about that. I would, I would urge Ted, who, who's here, and I, 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 I'd like him to give us some comments, if we can find a, a, a better name for it, and I was thinking this afternoon what might be good would be Scientology Aftermath Tours. Yeah? It's got the word Scientology in the title, which he was trying to avoid. And there is a Scientology in the Aftermath TV show. Um, so, you know, he'd have to check with a lawyer to see if um, there'd be any legal problems with doing that. But I think that would probably be an acceptable title. And I think that would, would say to people what this is and get people interested in coming down to a tour which starts off with something like... Uh, we're, we're not um, associated with Scientology or our A and E network or Scientology in the aftermath, but if you've watched the show on Netflix or A and E, we're going to show you around all the buildings that you've seen on the show, and we're going to tell you some more back history of of uh, uh, of the organization here in the city. I would love at some point if that wound up at a museum where there was Project Normandy and a place for former members to come and do Q&As with people. Uh, an educational forum like that, I think, would be good for the city. I know there are people who will disagree with me, but that was my original idea. Um, and, and I don't know if we want to bring up Ted or we want to talk among ourselves first. Well, if I open it up to the public, I'm opening it up to everybody. Okay. I'm not just opening it up to uh, sure. Mr. Rhino. Hard. So, um, are there any questions or comments to Mayor Bunker at this time, or do you want to oh, open Mayor discussion? Bunker. I like that. <laughs> Mister. Oh, Mister. Oh, <laughs> easy there. <laughs> huh? You slipped. I was a little slipped. Did I? I would, I would if you it. want the job, you can have it right now. <laughs> um, I'd prefer to hear from people first before. Yeah. Yeah. So are there any folks from the audience? I do need you to fill out a comment card if you're going to come up and speak. Uh, please come forward and state your name. You can fill it out after. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Wow, I feel like the most hated colored man in Clearwater, but that's cool. Um, it's not you, Mr. Mayor, it's me now. I'm doing what I can. Um, I have a prepared statement. I sent this in early for record. Uh, my name is Ted Reinhardt, R-E-I-N-H-A-R-D. I have, and I work for Cult City Tours. On behalf of the owner, Ms. Khalifi, salam alaikum, and thank you for having us here tonight. We started this company officially, launching last month. Since then, we've gotten nearly 300 reservations for our tours. 300 in a month. That's ridiculous. That's, let's see, 30, bus, 30 people per tour bus. That's 10 buses of tourists. Um, and we're bringing them downtown. It's 300 people tourists. We're bringing downtown with money to spend. Admittedly, 100%, things went off the rails lately, and that is the truth. And I would like to thank Councilman Mark Bunker, because he made it very clear to us that cooperation is the solution. And we absolutely agree. We apologize. We have fixed our error and sincerely hope for stronger relationships with our wonderful downtown businesses. We invite downtown restaurants and businesses. Give us your business cards, coupons, menus. I'll throw them in a backpack, and I'll carry them with me, handing them out as we go. Let us drive business through your doors. And in the future, if anybody has a problem, call. That's what Mark did. Mark said, instead of all this, you know, everybody's commenting and all the press and all that, Mark picked up the phone, our number's on the website, and he called. 
And even um, we had a problem, you know, and even um, Miss Lena had a, had a concern also. She called 24 hours later, no problem, you got it. Our policy is to get along. And all you gotta do, give us a shout. I mean, we're right here. Stop talking about us, start talking to us. We're, we're, we're very friendly folk. Um, a quick timeline of where we've been and where we're going. In January, this whole thing was an idea in January. In January, we discussed membership of the Chamber of Commerce, offered a free tour and introduced ourselves. They politely declined. That was the only time we heard back from anyone we emailed. We also reached out to the Downtown Clearwater Merchants Association, and we heard nothing back. This is before we had a name. We heard nothing back. Well, we even reached out to the Church of Scientology. True, true, I got a copy. And we heard nothing back. We appeared before the Downtown Development Board, and we all know who that went. <laughs> and so, with the, so what we did was we were left reaching out to ex-Scientologists to um, get their stories, get their information, get their experiences. And from that, we created a tongue-in-cheek, satirical walking tour of downtown, led by myself as a costume character, Commodore Obvious, uh, to give back to their, for their help and the dozens of others that contact us with their stories and their histories. We actually just were, um, we volunteered and we offered a charity superfan tour. We raised over $1,200. We also raised over $1,200 to the Aftermath Foundation. People flew in from around the country with a direct and, in, and indirect economic impact of thousands of dollars because they didn't stay in Dunedin. They didn't stay in St. Petersburg. They stayed at the beach. They put their money right here where their mouth was. And we also had 600 people worldwide listening to, listening to the call. It was kind of, it was kind of weird. My, my audio messed up when I was walking on the tour. And it, all I saw was 80 people that would just start randomly laughing as they were listening to their phone. It was kind of odd. Um, I would also, very first, I'd like to strongly commend the City Parks and Rec Department, they helped us get in compliance with City Desires for operating the Superfan Tour. Please wrap it up. Okay, all right, we've got great civil servants worth our tax dollars, fantastic. The future, we're bringing in vans, we're gonna get in the storefront with a small museum, we're actually hiring more staff to keep up. It's been okay. insane. Thank you. All right, any, qu have any questions? Any questions? Not at this time. Thanks, sir. Thank you. I got a tight three minutes. I want to share a few comments. I think the criticism that the criticism we have heard about cult city tours has been fair. I hope they will make reforms to resolve the concerns that have been raised. I appreciate the fact that Ted wants to show the people of Clearwater that Scientology is no reason to avoid coming downtown. I appreciate that he wants to demystify it and wants to drive business into the downtown district, business that would otherwise stay away. If he can accomplish that in a way that doesn't hurt the city's brand, then I think that is something everyone could get behind. However, none of the criticism of Cult City Tours has anything to do with the event that I helped organize this past Saturday, and that's what I'm really here to talk about. Sorry. <coughs> this past Saturday, March 13th, eight contributors of the Scientology and the Aftermath show hosted a tour of downtown Clearwater. This idea for the tour came about when my friends Mark and Claire Headley decided to visit Clearwater for spring break. Mark and Claire were featured in the Scientology and the Aftermath TV show. Mark said that while he was here, he wanted to guest host one of Ted's tours. I told Mark that if he was going to do it, then I was going to join him. Since Mark and I were already doing it, Mike Rinder suggested let's just make it a Scientology and the Aftermath reunion tour. So there was myself, Mike Rinder, Christy Colbrin, Mark and Claire Headley, David Kahn, and Matt Pesh were leading the tour. Councilmember Mark Bunker was also present and recorded the event. The Rinders and the Headleys and myself are also board members of the Aftermath Foundation, which helps people who are leaving Scientology. To acknowledge our involvement in the tour, Ted and his company generously donated the proceeds of Saturday's event to the Aftermath Foundation. We took almost 100 people through the various Scientology properties here in downtown. The overarching theme was, see, there's nothing to be afraid of here. You should be comfortable coming down here as often as possible. We avoided taking everybody right through the district so as not to distract the diners, but while walking past the district on Fort Harrison and Osceola, we pointed out all the fantastic businesses and restaurants and encouraged them to come down as often as possible. It was an extremely positive and well-received event. It is unfortunate but predictable that Scientology Sea Org members Amber, Pat, and Lisa Mansell visited all of the businesses on Cleveland Street and elsewhere downtown to spread false information and fear about what the event was going to be and what we would be doing in the restaurants afterwards. I actually, as I heard Mark Munker say, walked in to pour yours at 3.30 p.m. on Thursday and accidentally interrupted Amber, who was there speaking with the owner for the sole purpose of feeding him derogatory propaganda about Councilmember Bunker, myself, and the event that I was organizing. There have been some incorrect reports 
Sorry, I'm out of breath, guys. There's been some incorrect reports that I tried to book an after party at some of these places and was denied. This is not actually correct. The tour itself was the event. The only conversations I had with the business owners was to give them advance notice that we'd be bringing 50 to 100 people to order food and drinks. We didn't want to overwhelm the kitchen and service staff. Every place that I spoke with was thrilled to have our business until Scientology intervened with propaganda and fear-mongering. Scientology actively thwarted meaningful economic activity from occurring in the district on Saturday. Something to keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, everyone. Scott Sousa, uh, Downtown Clearwater Merchants Association. Excuse me, but I had to throw open my mouth a little bit when I'm listening to Mr. Reinhold spew on about his his wonderful things he's doing for the city. You all know how hard we have worked, the hundreds and hundreds of hours we have put in. We are furious and livid that they're making a joke of this. This man is, a, is an absolute joke. He took three of our businesses to task, lied about it. I mean, made up absolute lies. Talked to a, a Christian pastor, did the same. It, it's, it's just unbelievable that, that they can get up here and backtrack now and backpedal and try and, try and fix what they screwed up. I was actually going to ask Pam, I know that the, uh, the city of Clearwater is a, is a public domain. So if you go to Facebook and look up Clearwater City Tours, it is intentionally, you know, they use that name, they've taken that name, and intentionally send it to cult CD tours because they probably know that Facebook wouldn't, wouldn't allow that and it, they'd get more followers. And I, I think they're misrepresenting a city. I think it should go away. He already talked about that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm livid. Um, and for somebody who intends to run for city council and be behind this, to, to all the hard work we've done and all the great jobs, they brought 300 people down here. We brought 30,000 people down here in the last six months. We've worked really hard to get this done. Mr. Bunker has been an advocate of everything we've done. And this just you know, makes us backpedal and waste endless time a negative negativity that we've done nothing but but try and create create a positive and, and outgoing atmosphere for downtown and it's worked we've done a tremendous job you all know that you support us and I'm just voicing our opinion and no you can't go and, and lie and say slanderous slanderous things slanderous I'm sorry things about our businesses and then backpedal and go oh maybe that wasn't such a good idea no it's crap this is the business that they are. They're not here to help us. They're not here to help Clearwater. Thank you. Thank you. Any other citizens to be heard? I will close citizens to be heard. Council Member Bunker, do you have something to add? Yeah, yeah just as uh, uh, I, I agree with you, it, it was crap. You know, what happened was completely wrong. But to say that it can't be changed. I think it's also wrong. What had happened is a, a, a couple negative reviews were put up on TripAdvisor. They were taken down. There's been some apologies. And you can make sure that doesn't happen again. You can't come back for a second time, Scott. Sorry. Yeah. We don't give anybody a second bite of the apple. Um, <laughs> well, you know, Having been somebody who has worked to try to help turn downtown around for over 20 years, um, you've mentioned a lot of the things that I'm not happy about. And frankly, the paper didn't even print all the things that I said, which were even stronger. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm happy to have, I've, I've always told people, that they should be comfortable coming to downtown Clearwater. There is nothing to fear, and the businesses that are down here deserve to be supported. And so this is, you know, this is pretty upsetting to somebody like me. Uh, I think the name is horrible. Uh, it is going to come up on Google searches and any other search when people look for Clearwater. And, you know, Scientology is 
mainly based just in the very downtown core. If you go from Tampa International Airport to Clearwater Beach, you wouldn't even know Scientology existed in Clearwater. Uh, so to have this as something that's going to come up, I think is damaging. And it's damaging people I care about, which are people that have put their hard money and hours of hard work to try to make downtown better. And it can hurt the beach too. It can just hurt the entire city of Clearwater. That's why I'm opposed to it. Uh, and then when I heard about the reviews, that's pretty much when I was done. Especially when they say that these businesses only cater to Scientologists. Well, that's a bunch of crap because right. I go to all of the businesses that were mentioned and I'm a Southern Baptist and always have been. So uh, to smear somebody like that, you know, and to try to scare people away from coming to certain businesses, I think is inexcusable. You know, um, now there are First Amendment rights uh, that they have to run the tours. Obviously, uh, that's something we can't prohibit. But I'll tell you what, uh, and I've told this to somebody else, and they may be watching tonight, uh, fool me once, shame on you, but fool me twice is never going to happen again. Um, <laughs> I mean, it just was, it really is inexcusable. And I, I know you are saying that everything that occurred was wrong and that they need to right it. Um, but if it happens again and you're supporting it, I have to lump you in. So, I mean, you were helping film and everything else the other day. So that's how I feel. Um, you obviously are entitled to your feelings. Those are mine. Right. I don't know if anyone else has anything to add. Yeah, I'll jump in on this. You know, when you brought up the idea to begin with, I, first of all, I didn't like it because I don't like taunting anybody. And I know that I know that Scientology is a target in Clearwater. I've been here all my life. So, I mean, you don't have to tell me that we have, it, it's hard for us to overcome their presence here. It's not that they're, it doesn't affect the downtown. People can come downtown. They will probably not see any Scientologists when they come down. But just because that they're close, um, it's hard. So our merchants have struggled for years. <laughs> In years, I've been involved with downtown over 20 years trying to turn it around into a vibrant downtown. The CRA's mission statement now is to tell all the success stories about downtown. And we have a lot of them. And then when this comes along, and first of all, you call it the cult city, uh, that does more damage in one sentence, I think, than a year's worth of work that everybody's put together here. It's just, we aren't a cult city. Um, and then, then when I hear about the bullying of the restaurants and what happened there, that, that put me over the top as well. I mean, come on. I mean, you are telling everybody that how Scientology bullies, and then you pull the sack, same thing, exact same thing. Not you, I'm just saying they do, the tour. And, you know, these merchants downtown are struggling, and they need, they need to, to have their, keep their doors open to all patrons down here. But to make it sound like that just, you know, this restaurant is a Scientology restaurant, don't go there, that's it's a complete lie, and uh, that undermines everything that we've really worked hard. All our organizations, I mean, not only the merchants, but the partnership and the you know, CRA, I mean, all of us have worked really hard to do this. So if we had a ghost tour in downtown Clearwater, I probably wouldn't be upset about it because, I mean, you can't offend a ghost. I mean, that's not, you know, they have ghost tours in cities. But to say a cult tour and come here and start taunting and to see if you can get a reaction to people down here is just, I just think that's wrong. 
Council Member well, Hamilton. Again, as, as another person who's been here all his life, um, I remember uh, very well what downtown Clearwater was before the purchase of the uh, Fort Harrison Hotel by the United Churches of Florida. Um, yeah, I, we've all worked ever since, you know, we lost our downtown, not because of Scientology, we lost our downtown because of indoor air-conditioned malls. We had our first mall built, Sunshine Mall, which is no longer with us, and then Clearwater Mall and Countryside Mall, and, and everything moved out, created a, a, a lot of uh, opportunity, and the only... Uh, people that took advantage of the opportunity, I'm sad to say, is Scientology. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, but, and, and as uh, the mayor alluded to, you know, there's First Amendment issues and, and, and whatnot. I'm more of the opinion, you know, I think what has transpired up to this point is, is highly detrimental to what a lot of efforts have been um, as far as trying to create things in our downtown. Because um, it's, it's the old story. When you put something on, on the Internet, when you hit send, whether you take it back, you delete it or not, it's there. And it's there forever. So, um, you know, given all that, you know, I'm not... I look at the business itself and I say, you know, part of me just says I'm willing to just let it run because I don't think it has a long shelf life. I personally don't believe it has a long shelf life. Um, I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, I damn well don't want it to be continue to be named Cult City Tour because I think that is just an absolute taking a sledgehammer to what we're trying to do in our downtown. But, uh, um, you know, I'm not a fan of what the tour is necessarily, but I'll defend your right to have, to have that business. But uh, again, I just, you know, in my, in my heart and in my mind and, and what I know of Clearwater, I'm not sure this has a long shelf life, but. Council Member Beckman. So I, I pretty much agree with all that's been said up here. Um, we do operate within legal parameters. Uh, different cities have tours. There are Hollywood tours. And Boston has a walking tour of historical Boston. And I, and I haven't been on the tour, so I can't speak of what it actually is. I've seen clips, an eight-minute clip or seven-minute clip of the tour. What I would say is I... I, too, agree I don't care for the name. It has definitely has negative connotations. Um, but I would hope that whatever tour is going on is not denigrating people, is not making businesses or residents feel uncomfortable, pointed at, gawked at. Um, and I, you know, there are a couple of quotes, you know, I think um, Ted... Uh, Ted's last name, Reinhard. Mr. Mr. Reinhard was quoted as saying, well, you know, I'm just kind of a clown in a costume out here making a buck, and the, and the name was a marketing, you know, um, you know win. Um, but he also said tonight that, you know, it's, it's kind of tongue-in-cheek and sarcastic um, information. And, and I just don't know that that's... What it, what it should be. I mean, if you want to do a tour of Clearwater and talk about, imagine Clearwater and our amphitheater that's coming and the park that's coming and interactive um, uh, features and CRA property that's available, look how wonderful it is here and these properties are available and include that kind of stuff as well, you know, then call it, you know, come discover Clearwater t tour. But um, but again, I mean, we can't dictate names. We can't dictate the content of a tour. We can dictate being safe and and respectful of our merchants. But, um, you know, clearly the point is to sensationalize and point out 
certain areas, and um, and I just I just don't think that's a real respectful thing. I think it's targeting, and um, sure, it's going to bring business maybe to the restaurants, uh, but I would think if you don't give it enough oxygen, it's going to kind of it, it, either it'll keep going, you know, or it'll it'll peter out. But um, I think, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not thrilled about it. Mr. Bunker. And again, I agree with you on, on almost every point. Uh, most wholeheartedly, I, I, I want to impress upon you again what a horrible, horrible name that is for the city. And it, you really need to change that if you want to continue. Scientology Aftermath Tours has a ring to me. I, I don't know if that's what you'll wind up with or, or, or not, but um, I see uh, an educational tour that doesn't necessarily mock. So you might want to tone down your character. But there's still, it's a fascinating subject which has spawned book after book uh, uh, going clear on HBO, Scientology in the aftermath, bigger than ever on Netflix. People have won Pulitzers talking about this. It is something that people know about Clearwater, and it can be turned into a positive uh, if done properly. I, again, no mocking. Drop that name and support all the businesses that we have been trying to support. And I think it can be positive, but that has to, that has to be shown in the execution. All right. Again, it's not my company. Nothing else? Okay. Council Member Bunker. A couple weekends ago, I attended the um, Clearwater Jazz event at... Uh, Station Square Park, and it was a terrific event. Uh, absolutely wonderful evening. I, I have to say that the, the volunteer who greeted me at the event uh, was Scientologist Joni Siegel, and we got along fine. Um, she came up to me at intermission and asked for a donation for the festival. I said, absolutely. Um, I, I didn't mention before, but when Scientology is handing out that injunction uh, about me, uh, it goes both ways. I'm supposed to stay 10 feet away from Scientologists. Scientologists are all supposed to stay 10 feet away from me and everybody else who was named on the injunction. Uh, but when Scientology uses that against me or anyone, they never bring that up. At any rate, it was a great evening at, at the park. Um, and looking forward to the next few years where, without riots in the streets and hopefully with the pandemic, at bay, we can start stripping Scientology of that tax-exempt status. <laughs>